Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to give an update on the trials and tribulations of my next project here for the the Z3 that I'm undertaking, which is a five-speed manual conversion. Uh, currently has the four-speed automatic in it, and I've slowly been collecting parts over the last couple weeks to months almost, and I've about got everything ready to go. So I was just going to kind of walk through everything that I found and everything that I've come across along the way to maybe make it easier on someone else. Um, the big thing to note is between the variations of engine sizes and um, differential housings, I think, is the big thing. There's quite a bit of variations on some of the parts, uh, more specifically the drive shaft lengths vary quite a bit as do the shift linkages. Um, even between uh, just the Z3 variations itself, and then if you try to look at other E36s, uh, for example, 325s, 328s, uh, 330s, all that stuff, they all have different size components when it comes to some of them. The And I'll talk a little bit about uh, which path I'm going and which path I started with and why I changed and all that. So without further ado, let's uh, just get started. So some of the options that were available, you'll see I have two transmissions here. There were two variations of the five speed that came in these vehicles. One, the ZF 325 speed and then the Getrag 250G. And it, from what I can tell, the higher uh, displacement engines came with the ZF and the lower displacement engines, uh, for example, the 1.9 four cylinder and I think the lower displacement like 2.3, 2.5 liter uh, straight sixes came with the Getrag 250. Uh, the difference being the 250 and the 320, those are the, the torque ratings that the, the transmission can handle. <clears throat> so that's probably why the bigger engines came with the 320 rated ZF and uh, between the two transmissions there is a difference the housings I try to get them a little bit closer together but the the overall length of the housing from where it mounts to the engine to where the drive shaft mounts is different between the two transmissions I think they're pretty interchangeable depending on which route you want to go I will say the Getrag was cheaper than the ZF, and there's a lot more of them out there. Um, but the, there's an inch difference in overall length between the two transmissions. So depending on which route you pick, you'll have to make sure that you adjust accordingly with the big thing is going to be the drive shaft length. <clears throat> uh, both transmissions, from what I can tell, are pretty reputable, and they can they hold up well. Uh, like I said, the only thing that might make a difference is the power levels that you're going for because the ZF can handle more torque. The ZF is known for having what they call the fifth gear leans. And there's um, dowels or pins inside here that get worn down. And I guess that can kind of add to some slop in in the, the shifting mechanism. So that is something that people refurbish when they do these transmissions. I, for now, I'm just going to try my luck and see where I end up at with this because uh, down the road I'm probably going to be adding more power, so I'll have the transmission out at another point. <clears throat> um, Alright, so between the automatic and the manual, there is a difference in the cross member, and that's probably due to the length of the housings of these uh, two manual transmissions versus the length of the automatic. Uh, I'll probably have the two laying side by side when I go to do the actual conversion to show you overall length. But uh, make sure you get the cross member, that's for the manual transmission. Um, so the shift linkage here, you see, there. this one is out of a, I want to say it's a 325 that I found in the salvage yard. Uh, it's not the right length. I basically just got this for the uh, the shift stick itself. But the carrier and the link it itself are going to be a different length for the Z3 just because there's variations in where the engine is mounted uh, in relation to the tunnel hole cut out for the shifter 
in the vehicle. And being that the shift mechanism partially mounts to the body on one end and then to the transmission on the other end, that uh, relationship is pretty important. So you wanna make sure you get the right part there. One way around that, that I had considered, but not doing for now is there is a solid mount shifter, meaning that the, the carrier for the shifter is actually hard mounted to the, the transmission tunnel in the vehicle and that removes this carrier piece. So then you have just the shift linkage onto the body and then this one link going up to the transmission. <clears throat> so you would need, I think if you go that route, you need a maybe a custom length shift lever linkage, depending on whether uh, the, the aftermarket one accounts for this angle between the shift uh, rod and the ball. That might vary the length that's required on the underside. <clears throat> I'll be replacing all the bushings and everything. You can see I got a couple rock auto boxes there. Basically going through and replacing all the bushings and everything. You'll need the shift boot and the shift knob. Found those at the salvage yard. That's another thing. The get rags are a lot easier to find. I found this one at a salvage uh, website. Costs about $170 plus freight shipping. So the shipping was actually almost more than the transmission itself. Uh, so if you can find that locally, uh, that'd be the way to go, which is what ended up happening. That's why I have two transmissions. Initially, I was having trouble finding the ZF uh, for a decent price because people are asking you know, six, $700 for a ZF transmission on eBay. I figured the Getrag was much more attainable at uh, $200, say. Uh, but I ended up stumbling across this ZF uh, at a local salvage yard, which it looked like someone had tried to get it out, but had a problem with a few of the bolts being seized in the engine side of the, the salvage vehicle. I ended up going in there with a sawzall and just lopping it off and yeah, so that's why I'm going with the ZF, because uh, I was able to find one. And the salvage yard, I think they charged me, I want to say it was $180, plus $100 or like $50, $70 core charge. Uh, so if you can find that locally, that's probably the way to go. I try to avoid eBay as much as possible because a lot of these parts are heavy, so you're going to spend a lot in shipping. So I got lucky, and so now I have to get rid of this get drag fast speed. So if you're looking for one of those, I got one. Uh, the Guibo, this isolator, goes between the back of the transmission and where the drive shaft mounts. Uh, good time to replace that. Not too expensive. Uh, the next biggest thing that I had trouble finding, like I said, because of the variations in length that exist out there, some of them that I found used on eBay uh, weren't labeled or it was unknown what part number they are. So if you got the 2.8 liter and you're using the ZF gearbox, you're looking for that part number right there, 9474. Uh, you could, if you're using the Getrag, there's a different drive shaft because, like I said, the casings are about an inch difference in length. With the transmission, I also got flywheel pressure plate. So here's flywheel, pressure plate, and clutch disc. This one seems to be in pretty decent shape. I'm gonna just use it for now. Um, down the road, I'll probably go performance. One thing new to me for these, the flywheel setup on these is a dual mass. Essentially the flywheel and this surface right here, which the clutch disc engages, is separated. And they have mass damping basically and a spring set in between them so that's what absorbs uh, the vibrations of your clutch engagement on this vehicle as you can see here on the clutch disc it's solid typically what I've seen in other vehicles that I've had is there's a spring mechanism in here that absorbs the engagement <clears throat> uh, there are options out there to do a, a solid flywheel conversion 
Uh, from what I could see, those are about $600 a piece. Uh, depending on which, I mean, it, it depends on which performance category you're going into on that. Might be something I do down the road. For now, I'm just going to use the clutch that came with the vehicle. Because it's all worn in together. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. So the pedal box, you'll need that. So you can get your your third pedal in there. And that basically mounts at the same location on the firewall as the current brake pedal box does. There are some more sensors that come with it. Clutch disengagement for the cruise control. Uh, between that and then the wiring for the reverse light. So that's this sensor here for reverse. Those are the two things electronically that you need to do on this swap. Uh, moving along, you'll need to get the clutch cylinders. So this is the master cylinder right here. It has a tube. And this goes up to the brake booster reservoir. So that, that feeds the master, master clutch cylinder. That then goes into this cable here. There's a body mounted transition point where that goes to this flex tube. And then this is what goes to the slave cylinder inside the transmission. So that transmission slave cylinder and pushes through that hole right there on this throw out lever and that's got a throw out bearing which I'm going to replace as well another wear item common on these back here this pivot point this is made out of plastic and then you've got this metal throw out lever pivoting on that there are two options that I can see for replacing that well other than going back to the plastic, there's a brass and a stainless steel. I'll be replacing it with a brass one. Uh, the reason I went that way out is because brass is a little bit softer than steel. So if you have steel on steel, it's probably more likely that if your lubricant or whatever uh, uh, ends up dissipating after a while, you get steel on steel and that's just going to squeak every time you engage the clutch. So that's another wear item I'm going to be replacing. <coughs> So all in all, I think those are all the parts that you're going to need for the swap. The only other thing would be uh, flywheel bolts, getting replacement flywheel bolts. So the only thing I'm waiting now, like I said, uh, I got that out of 325. It's not the wrong length. I've got the right mechanism coming from eBay. That'll be here in the next week or so. Then, uh, beginning of March sometime, I'll probably start tackling this project. Another future thing to come, I've got this muffler off of a WRX. Uh, a WRX, which I had before, I really like the sound of the cob system, so I'm probably going to see if I can just get a local shop to plumb that for me. Another thing in the works, found this three-spoke steering wheel with the airbag and everything so that'll be going in next just waiting on a, a cover I've got a cover that I'm just gonna replace this worn one with so that'll look nice and fresh beyond that front brakes uh, these are the calipers off of a 330i from 2006 direct bolt on from what I understand a lot of people are doing this conversion because it's bolted up and then the difference in rotor size I believe you go from 287 millimeters stock to 325 millimeters uh, with this setup so you get a little more bite out of that so for now that is everything I've got cooking and uh, look for the next video when I get my shift linkage and we'll start tearing into the swap itself I'll probably put that chapter that out into removal install and, and things like that so stay tuned for more to come